and I have a very, very exciting video that has been a year in the making. I'm not pregnant yet, <laughs> just to put that out there. I wish I was announcing that right now. But um, we just came back um, from our fertility appointment with our fertility specialist, so that's so exciting! We were on the waiting list for a full year. <laughs> it was six months and then I had to cancel my appointment because I was pregnant and then I miscarried like two days later, so that really, really sucked. Um, so we had to wait another six months to see her because, yeah, there's only one fertility specialist um, where I'm from in the whole area. So yeah, but I'm very excited that we got to see her today. Her name is Dr. Wise, which I think is kind of cool. <laughs> um, so hopefully she'll be very wise and be able to help us out on our journey. And I was very, very happy and excited because I was nervous that um, when I went in um, that we wouldn't do much testing, she wouldn't ask much questions, that she would dismiss us because we're young. Um, because we have experienced some of that, especially at the hospital and clinics and that kind of stuff. They're just like, oh, you're young, don't worry about it. You just have to relax and you'll get pregnant. And <laughs> that is not helpful <laughs> advice at all. Um, so I was very happy that she was like, okay, well, um, let's go through your whole history. Let's figure out what you guys have done so far, um, what you know about trying to get pregnant, and also let's do as many tests as we can just to rule out everything and to see if everything is normal and healthy. So I wanted to walk through the whole appointment process um, just in case anybody else is wanting to see a fertility specialist. Um, yeah, so it started with seeing my family doctor. Um, I asked him if we could get a reference and be able to see a fertility specialist. And he put in the reference and <laughs> it did take six months um, to get that appointment. But yeah, and then we had to reschedule so it was a full year. But um, at least we got to see her. We're very excited about that. And now we'll have much more frequent appointments with her. So that is great. <laughs> what happened was we went in um, and we filled out some paperwork. Um, and I was very pleasantly surprised. I was worried that it would be all about me. But um, they want to look at you and your husband and because um, it's both sides of the equation. You both want to be kind of checked out, make sure that everything is okay. So um, he filled out actually more forms than me um, because they had a lot of my history sent over from my doctor, so that was very helpful. Um, but yeah, so we filled out our forms and we actually only filled out half of them because there were so many um, and the doctor just called us in. She's like, it's okay, we'll just discuss it, everything and I'll write it down. So yeah, that works. I'm excited because I was nervous that um, when I went in um, that... We wouldn't do much testing, she wouldn't ask much questions, that she would dismiss us because we're young. Um, because we have experienced some of that, especially at the hospital and clinics and that kind of stuff. They're just like, oh, you're young, don't worry about it. You just have to relax and you'll get pregnant. And <laughs> that is not helpful <laughs> advice at all. Um, so I was very happy that she was like, okay, well, um, let's go through your whole history, let's figure out what you guys have done so far, um, what you know about trying to get pregnant, and also let's do as many tests as we can just to rule out everything and to see if everything is normal and healthy. And yeah, and she took our history. So yeah, um, she just came out and we kind of shook her hand and introduced ourselves and everything. And she seemed like a really nice lady and really kind and very good at kind of calming anxieties, which is awesome, especially for someone in that position that is like a really, really helpful thing because it's so important for people who want to have kids to be able to have kids. Um, and you want to have someone who understands how frustrating and hard that would be when you're struggling to get pregnant. So yeah, that was good. She was very nice and understanding and I was actually so excited to have, sorry, I'm holding a tablet so I'm like, whoa. So it's extremely shaky, I'm sorry, <laughs> but it's very heavy. So we went into her office and um, Jason and I sat down 
And she just went through our family history. She started with me and asked if like there was any fertility problems in our family history, um, any men any um, health problems just in general, and um, just asked us like everything that we've tried and how familiar we are with like what you can do to get pregnant. And I told her um, that I, I know a lot and that we've basically tried absolutely everything each month. Um, and she's like, that's good. You got all the bases covered, so that's good. Um, and she asked Jason all about his stuff. Once we had all of our family history, she, she looked at it and she knows, because I had to call them and tell them about the miscarriage. Um, and actually that really helped when I was going through the miscarriage because surprisingly a lot of people were not understanding and they just didn't care and didn't even respond to me basically after I told them. They're just like, oh. <laughs> I'm like, well, thanks for the support there. But yeah, people are very awkward when it comes to that stuff sometimes. Um, but yeah, so she, it helped me when I went through there that I talked to the receptionist and she was very understanding and she actually asked like how far along I was, asked me information about it and I'm like, well, at least somebody cares that they got all that information so I didn't have to rehash it too much during the appointment. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so she said the great news is that we got pregnant naturally on our own within the normal time frame. Um, we'd been trying for nine months when we got pregnant, so that's really good. Um, and she said that is the best indicator that everything is healthy. They have at least one working tube. <laughs> and um, yeah, she says if you're able to get pregnant, even if it ends in a miscarriage, that is a great sign that you get pregnant again. So. She said she's very, very hopeful about that and she said she sees tons of great things in our histories that she thinks we'll be able to get pregnant relatively quickly, which is really exciting and really good and gave us a lot of hope and she said everything seems very normal, um, it just seems to be taking longer for us, so that is very good. <laughs> a part of me, like, I was very happy and excited about the appointment and very relieved afterwards. Um, but a part of me is like, I just want to know if there's something going on um, because I want to be able to fix it and then hopefully be able to get pregnant easily. And that will probably hopefully be the case. So after we went through our history, then she decided to make a game plan and wanted to test us for everything just to rule out everything and, um, and then see like if we're normal kind of thing um, or see. Not to, not, she was trying to explain that it's not that she suspects anything is wrong, she just wants to rule everything out so that we can say yes you guys are perfectly healthy um, to do with fertility and yeah so uh, I think that is awesome and that is really really good for me because I have a lot of anxiety and I just want to know um, as much as I can about what's going on and what we can do to help it. So I'm going to share with you guys our list of all the testing we're going to get done. So she said the first thing that they want to check out is if I'm ovulating because that's obviously a very important part of the scenario in getting pregnant. Um, and she said that she is 100% confident that I am ovulating because I have regular cycles and um, she said that like I do OPKs all the time and I just everything seems to be pointing towards a normal ovulation and that I have at least one working tube, most likely two working tubes, so that's really good. <laughs> and because we were able to confirm that I got a positive OPK, um, she said that that rolls out, um, that rolls out ovulation, um, like basic ovulation issues and she didn't see any any instance of endometriosis or PCOS, so that's really, really good. The second thing that she said she always goes over with her patients is your ovarian reserve. And she said, because I'm younger, um, she said like if I was 38 trying for the first time to get pregnant, then she might start worrying about my ovarian reserve because you lose more and more eggs as you go along. Um, but because I'm 27, um, she said that she's really not worried. She said if there was an issue with it, they're, they're going to check out everything just in case, but if there was an issue, it would be very, very uncommon um, for someone my age. So yeah, there would most likely be something else going on um, in my body if I had an ovarian reserve issue. So she said it's very unlikely that I do, <laughs> so that's good news. The next thing that she wanted to check was my tubes, make sure I don't have any blockages um, and that both my tubes are working properly. Um, and she wanted to check my uterus in general. So. 
for both of those, um, I was kind of nervous a little bit when she said the HSG test because there's always so many videos of women who are like, it was so painful, I can't handle it. She said she's even heard of women saying like it's worse than childbirth and I can't say anything because I haven't had it done yet, but she said that it's very, very unlikely. She said it really shouldn't hurt at all. It should be just a mild discomfort, maybe some period like cramps afterwards. Um, the main discomfort would be that you have to have a catheter in, I think, or like a tube in. The main discomfort would be having that um, tube inserted. Um, but yeah, I have some more information she gave me on the HSD test and I most likely am going to get that next month, which is crazy. Um, but I think it would just be good to rule out everything and make sure all my tubes are good and give me a better chance of conceiving once everything's cleared out if there's anything in there. So that's good. So the next thing on the list that she wanted to kind of test this for is just pelvic health in general. Um, and that would be if I had any signs of endometriosis. Um, and I like, she asked me a bunch of questions like if I had acne issues, facial hair issues, um, very painful uh, periods and cycles and I haven't had any of that and she said it really is unlikely that I have endometriosis um, but she said she's not even going to touch this option until like we're way down the road and we've tried a million other things before it because she said that involves um, an investigative surgery and she said for me she really doesn't think that's necessary and if we have to we'll revisit it in the future but most likely wouldn't so that's good <laughs> I don't want a surgery the final thing on the list and she even she was joking about like saying like oh yeah it's so unfair like all these other um, invasive procedures for the woman and there's one little thing for the man at the end um, to get uh, my husband's sperm tested so he's gonna do that very soon so on top of that testing well it's kind of part of all those testing things Things. Um, we got some uh, different requisitions for blood, sperm samples and all that. Um, I have to wait till the third day of my cycle to get my blood drawn and then they will see if I have any thyroid issues, um, just anything that could really affect my fertility. Um, yeah, so they're gonna test that um, and I have to wait till next month for the HCG because they have to do the test at a certain time in my cycle also and I'm already halfway through this current cycle so that's totally fine um, and I was actually really very happily surprised that she wanted to do a pap smear and an ultrasound right there and I was like okay because <laughs> um, usually you have to wait for so long for these things in Canada um, and yeah, so we just went into her other office there and just did a quick um, pap smear and an ultrasound. And my husband got to actually sit in the room, which is actually really awesome. They of course gave the option, like if you're uncomfortable, he can wait outside the room, but I'm very comfortable with him um, with that kind of stuff. So it was nice to have him there and he got to see <laughs> his first ultrasound because he didn't get to see any of the pregnancy, unfortunately. And the ultrasound was the coolest thing ever. Well, first, before I get to the ultrasound, um, it was kind of neat too, because they usually, I have, I've always had male doctors, so it was really nice to have a woman doctor, just because it's just more comfortable. And men, um, it just, this is very generalized, I'm sure it's not for everyone, but um, all the doctors that I've had, they are so uncomfortable when you talk about this stuff. Even if I'm comfortable, they're like clearly super nervous. And then if they have to do a pap smear or anything, like I find that they, um, during like physicals they're supposed to examine like your breasts and everything and they just skip over it because they don't want it to be awkward and it's just like I don't know I think it's better to have a woman because they like you have to get that stuff tested even if it's awkward <laughs> like it's part of the job um, but yeah so she was very nice and she also um, instead of sticking the really cold scary speculum just straight up in there <laughs> um, she um, had it all warmed up and she was very, um, very gentle about it and very like, oh, are you okay? Is this all right? And very good about it. So that was really nice <laughs> instead of just shoving it up there and it hurting for a few days. Um, but yeah. <laughs> um, but then we did the ultrasound and that was such a cool experience. I love that. But the ultrasound was really cool. I was very excited that she did that because, um, I knew like if there was any cysts or anything, she would see that. And th that was one of the first things she said, there's no cysts in there. So that's good. Um, and then she also, I have no idea how she saw it, but I guess she's seen so many of them. Um, she could pin, pinpoint where my um, fallopian tubes were and they just look like darker spots on the ultrasound. Um, 
the picture and it was cool so she said okay this is your one floping tube this is your other one and in one of them it looks like I had three or four little white dots uh, white eggs <laughs> and then the other one had one giant one like this the rest were like a pinprick super small and there was probably three small ones and one giant one and she said okay that's most likely the one that's going to um, be ovulated in a few days because I'm very close to ovulation um, so that was really cool to see and it's amazing the size difference between them um, and she also said I have a really good thick lining and that was cool to see because it was actually like a thick white line around the whole thing and it was amazing like how well you could see that so that's really good she said no sis and it seems like everything looks perfect and normal so that's awesome but yeah that was my whole experience at the fertility specialist and it was very good and do you do you want to add anything mr magoo of how, how you felt it went <laughs> was it awkward to talk about your um your sperm and all that stuff it's awkward now <laughs> was that okay to talk about yes that's good yeah he said i was worried that he would be too embarrassed to talk about that stuff because I can understand that um, but he was he said it was totally fine and she was it was easier to talk to her than our normal doctor because he's very awkward about things sometimes <laughs> but yeah <laughs> so that was our experience at the fertility specialist it went it went really well and I'm excited to get all this testing done and so hopefully we'll make a baby very soon <laughs> I hope this helped and if you guys have any questions please feel free to always message me or leave a comment and I'll do my best to respond as soon as I can and don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this video and would like to see more um, related to our TTC journey or any of my other videos thanks so much for watching guys and I'm sorry I've been away for a while I've been absolutely crazy at work and just like I, I it's just too much I couldn't do it I have so many videos that are ready to go up I just have to finish editing them um, but I will do that and I will try to upload more regularly at least two videos a week so that'd be awesome <laughs> but thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one bye